Uh, my name is Patrick Kühtreiber. Um, you've heard the title of the presentation already. Uh, it's a study I've conducted together with uh, Victoria Pack and Delphine Reinhardt. We're all from the University of Göttingen. So first, um, there we go. Uh, first thing about differential privacy. I will not go into detail, just a little uh, overview. We focus on the two models of differential privacy, the global model, which you can see on the top, and the local model on the bottom. What does differential privacy do? It basically, the idea behind differential privacy is to perturb data in such a way to protect an individual's privacy while keeping the underlying data distribution intact by adding noise to the data. We can see here on the top in the global model that the data uh, is perturbed, so the noise is added globally, so to speak, like on a like you can imagine a company server, uh, whereas in the local model, which you can see here on the bottom, uh, the data gets perturbed locally on, for example, the user's device. And only perturbed data leaves the device, so to, to take away basically is that raw data never leaves the device in the, uh, in the local model, which means it is more privacy preserving. So what did we do? Uh, we kind of like, so the idea behind our study and the original study which we replicated is, can differential privacy increase the user's willingness to share data? Why do we need the data, for example, for machine learning applications? So as I've said, the original study was conducted uh, by I Ping Xiong and colleagues in 2020. And we know um, that uh, countries' culture and privacy regulations among, com uh, among continents uh, impact privacy attitudes, so therefore we thought it was worthwhile to replicate the study in another cultural context. We can see here um, the small overview of, uh, about the differences of our sample and the originals. Um, our sample was Germans, um, representative of the German population in terms of gender, age, and education, whereas you can see in the original study, uh, which was conducted on MTurk, it was heavily skewed, skewed towards uh, younger, higher educated people, primarily from the US and India. So we conducted two experiments. The first one, uh, it was an online questionnaire uh, where we put our participants into a scenario where we told them you just downloaded a health app called Orange Health, and this app requires certain sensitive information of you. Um, and the app needs that information in order to improve the app locally for you, to recommend certain things for you, and we also want to improve the app lo uh, globally um, for all users, for, for example, for machine learning uh, applications. So we had three groups, three conditions. Uh, one was exposed to differential privacy, one to local differential privacy, and a control group. And this all is in line with the original study, and we also copied the questionnaire, uh, basically verbatim, from the original study. So this is basically what our participants saw. They had this mock-up, basically, of an iOS app um, where they were posed uh, 14 questions, for example, date of birth, weight, height, but also more sensitive questions like income level, medication, um, um, uh, like medical history. And so they did not actually have to answer these questions, but rather um, uh, indicate how they would their potential answers to be processed. So they could uh, choose to have it used only by the app locally, um, which would be in line with people uh, who are a bit, a bit more privacy preserving. Uh, it could be used by the app locally and the server, so basically give the data away. Uh, and also, of course, for those who don't, did not want to um, give out the data, the potential data, um, to not share with neither the app nor the server, or they could also choose not to answer. So what could we confirm from the original study that our participants, just as, as in the original study, did not differentiate between differential privacy, like the global and the local model of differential privacy. Answers in both conditions were very consistent, very uh, similar, so there was no difference uh, between uh, among these groups. Um, we have, however, some new findings, some differences that uh, in our sample, the communication of differential privacy in both groups, local and global, had in fact an, uh, an effect on their willingness to share data, especially uh, when it comes to high sensitive data. And also we've asked an additional question which, which was not asked in the original study, um, whether they use a health app uh, in, their, in their private life. And 
participants who actually use a health app uh, showed more willingness to share data. Now for a second experiment, uh, it was the same scenario. You download a health app that requires certain sensitive information. And so, but in this case, we had in line with the original study, 11 different descriptions of global and local differential privacy to find out which of these descriptions um, showed uh, the greatest effect in the willingness to share data, but also in the understanding uh, and the comprehension of differential privacy. So we first asked, do you want to share data and, and why or why not? And secondly, and more importantly, in, in this experiment, the focus lied on comprehension. Um, so it, they could self-report their understanding of differential privacy, uh, but also later could um, um, had to answer five comprehension questions. Uh, an example you can see here, can an attacker see your real data if they get access to the database? Um, and four other questions in this, in this line. So uh, I will just show one uh, interesting finding from, from the second experiment. Uh, if we focus on the y-axis uh, one moment, we can see here, we post five comprehension questions. They get one point if they answered a comprehension question correctly. So five points is the maximum. And you can see that the scores, these red dots here, are very, very low. And if we look at the x-axis here, these are, this is the time spent in seconds looking at the description of differential privacy. So basically, people who just spent uh, less than 20 seconds on the description scored uh, significantly lower than people who spent around three minutes, there is no increase afterwards, which suggests that um, participants who actually spent more time reading and understanding or trying to understand the description also understood uh, differential privacy better. So what could we confirm? We had a very similar overall sharing rate conf uh, compared to the original study, around uh, so roughly 50% of our participants wanted to share data under differential privacy, and we had an overall um, difficulty to comprehend rate, which was also very similar to the original study, meaning 13% around uh, indicated that they found it hard to understand differential privacy, um, which, if you remember this slide, you know, they were wrong. Uh, so we have some differences and additional findings. So among our 11 groups, there, were, there weren't many differences. Um, so, so the differences were there, but not as extreme as they were in the original study. So we had very uh, like homogenous um, results, basically. Um, we could correlate the IT background, like the self-reported IT background of our participants with the difficulty to comprehend differential privacy and also the actual understanding, which both show uh, higher results when participants had an IT background. And also, again, the usage of health apps um, significantly increased the willingness to share. So for discussion and future work, um, it is clear from the original study and through our now, I would say, like validation that um, differential privacy is not well understood in its currently, you know, uh, form in its currently uh, transported form. Um, our participants had an like all or nothing mindset, meaning they either didn't want to share anything or they wanted to share with uh, globally and locally, so with a server and, and the app. Uh, meaning that the difference between global and local differential privacy was also not present in our study. And we know uh, that text is not the ideal way to communicate any privacy-related things like privacy notices and anything. So also for differential privacy, we need better metaphors, which we will uh, hear about later, I guess, but also uh, like graphical descriptions of differential privacy. So this concludes my talk, and thank you very much for your attention, and I'm open to questions.